Yeah, good morning to, to all. It's a pleasure to be with you today, a small group of people, but I believe that we will be proactive. I hope so. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for a lovely, lovely introduction. Uh, my name is Jovan. I'm part of the CTAI community. We are, we are one of the world largest, I would say, most active AI communities uh, right now present in more than 70 uh, cities around the globe. Um, yeah, if we are talking about artificial intelligence today, there is a lot of hype, a lot of uh, uh, great announcements in the media, and we really need to discuss about the segments, how to actually classify some fiction and real stuff actually that are happening, uh, happening today. But also when you have this kind of uh, things where people who are experts in domain are saying really uh, huge announcements about some stuff, we really need to think about some, uh, some elements. Rick Kurtzwell, he is part of the Google Brain team, innovator. He developed a lot of different kind of uh, patents in uh, mostly speech, uh, speech industry. Uh, he said that the uh, level of progress that actually that we will achieve in this century will be thousand times bigger than everything we actually we achieved so far in past century. And if we are thinking about the stuff from the perspective where only 100 years ago we didn't have electricity, cars, internet, etc., and someone's come and say, okay, thousand times multiply uh, with that, actually, uh, of course, that uh, our our uh, emotion, our, our, our feelings is actually that we are afraid about those things and uh, it's very easy to manipulate people uh, around some stuff. And yes, our community and things what we are doing um, are focused on actually um, educating people and enabling people to apply artificial intelligence, not only from the technical point of view, but also from the side of the ethics, business strategy and some other stuff that are essential for the right execution. Um, as we said, we are present in more than 70 uh, cities around the globe and I'm really proud of the fact that uh, we are present here in Serbia. A year ago we actually established first chapter here actually in Novi Sad. Uh, we're in last year we gathered more than 1,000 people on different kind of events focused on artificial intelligence. Um, we also organized first AI conference there where we hosted Google, IBM, SAP and uh, others. And if we are talking about artificial intelligence, it's not a new thing. Pretty much uh, a lot of things actually are known uh, for decades right now. And of course that today in media or movies in, or some, how to say it, more, more um, interesting uh, literature, you can find Alan Turing as a father of, of a lot of things actually in, in AI and uh, Turing test and other things are pretty much quoted. But this guy, Vannevar Bush, uh, I know, do you know this guy or heard for him? He was uh, dean of uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 30s and 40s, and he's actually father, I would say, influencer of, or influence, he influenced actually uh, Turing's mindset and approach regarding the, the thinking machines. And his essay, as we may think, is something that is uh, really futuristic. And if we are talking about the artificial intelligence, mostly uh, today we are talking about the neural networks, deep learning as something that is really uh, contributing a lot and, and it's solving a lot of, lot of problems. Uh, from the first ages where we had Michalok and Pitts actually who uh, created the first neural mathematical cell to these days where we have generative adversarial networks, a uh, bunch of different kinds of arch architectures are actually deployed, uh, specified by uh, so some uh, problems in industry uh, that of course you need to pay attention to some stuff. These days pretty interesting in media, I know have you uh, actually uh, uh, watch that is uh, research of Victor Olimpiski and Samsung Laboratory where they are doing uh, some uh, computer vision uh, problems where they are using GAN for actually uh, putting more life into, into static images and it's really something, something that is so, so, so interesting. Um, what actually has changed about artificial intelligence in last year? Uh, if we're talking about the AI, of course, three key enablers are there. And those are innovative algorithms, as we uh, had the chance to see on the previous slide, uh, different kinds of uh, architectures that are now really interesting uh, for, for uh, some specific problems. But also uh, data as a 
fuel of all, all segments we, without data. We are not able to, to provide uh, reliable outputs there. Uh, and companies today are investing a lot uh, in structuring, collecting data, um, and cleaning, uh, etc. Of course, with, uh, uh, with the uh, breakthroughs in, in hardware development, uh, we can see a bunch of different kinds of uh, things which are actually helping, and we can see this approach of AI as a commodity where companies like Microsoft, Google, etc., are delivering different kind of uh, um, services where you very easily can uh, deploy some, some models without need for, for some bigger hardware units um, in your company. But also I need to mention the areas that are contributing to AI and this is something that is really, really important. Personally, I believe that uh, deep learning and all that hype about uh, that, that uh, group of, of, of algorithms is not the only thing that we need to, 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 to think about. Um, are, of course, that um, research in brain, uh, brain uh, research, uh, research in psychology and some other elements of biology are actually uh, giving us more insights about uh, actually our cognitive systems and from the beginning yes we are trying to mimic our cognitive system. Uh, and when you focus on AI goals where today uh, a different kind of problems are trying to be solved, mostly right now they are focused on some learning, reasoning aspects, uh, planning uh, as something that is really interesting. Um, you can see a pretty distributed market and progress of actually growth is, is pretty high. Um, this is one really interesting uh, slide uh, from McKinsey Global Institute where actually from the left side you can see different industries uh, that are actually in artificial intelligence or they are um, having some benefits of, of AI right now and from the and in the first column here are more uh, neural networks oriented stuff the second part actually is more like traditional statistic and uh, more uh, data science science approach but today com uh, today industries are actually investing a lot uh, in artificial intelligence uh, you have announcements from big companies uh, where billions of dollars on, on uh, actually on, on a year level actually are are, are deployed uh, If we are talking about uh, if we are talking about AI and technology aspects today, uh, it's a real huge battle actually between between uh, continents, uh, of course, between China and states as uh, two competitors in this in this area. And actually, this is also PwC research report from 2017, uh, where they are. It, it, it was actually a research uh, focused on free year period about the investments of uh, and percentage of investments uh, in AI uh, in next three years. Actually, this research uh, and prediction is uh, still still active. Where we can see that North America and China are leading actually in in, in that process of creating uh, infrastructure and strategy for implementing artificial intelligence. And of course the question is where we are there. Uh, what's the position of Europe in, in the battle between China and uh, states? Um, two, two weeks ago I was in Berlin uh, where one professor from a German institute uh, for, for, for research uh, in Berlin, actually he uh, talked more about the uh, China position, uh, Chinese position on a global scale. Um, and uh, they are planning to invest by 2030 100 million euros, uh, 100 billion euros for different kind of uh, related AI uh, topics uh, that uh, are um, how to uh, separate it into different segments. I have a connection with one company from, from China which is called Scroll AI. And in that process of, of educating new people, uh, the, um, it's, it's something that they are doing is uh, pretty on a high high level. Uh, they are actually delivering something that is called adaptive learning, uh, where they are having some personalized tests for students, for uh, for for uh, uh, kids in elementary school. Where based on those uh, tests, they are actually uh, getting personalized assignments and and uh, entire plan for the uh, upgrades of their skill set in the future. And they have actually a couple of million users in China, kids that are on daily basis actually uh, controlled, I would say, by AI in process of education. 
and uh, for last year actually they have result uh, of 32 percent or in average um, 30 percent um, of upgrades of skill sets of, of young kids um, in, in, in China in period of one year, which is really something, uh, something important uh, because, of course, quantity of the research and, and things what are happening there are, are, are on a really high, high level. Um, yep, rest, rest of the world here. Also, question is where we are, Europe, where we are with, with, the, with the research in artificial intelligence. And also, uh, you can say that a bunch of really quoted uh, researchers in artificial intelligence today are actually coming from Europe, but unfortunately, they are now based in states working for big uh, companies like Google, IBM, and others. But originally, we have that potential uh, strength if we are able to pull them again uh, to, to, to Europe and see how we can reshape some, some stuff. Um, my personal bet is, of course, on, on, on China and things what are happening there are really tremendous. Um, here you can find different kind of information about the Chinese AI companies and here we are talking about AI driven companies. By that I, I mean companies that are totally focused on only artificial intelligence or where you have 14 Chinese companies that are uh, valued more than one billion dollars. Um, also here are not listed companies like Alibaba, Tencent, Didi, etc. Uh, where they are having artificial intelligence but uh, they are having that as augmented feature to their core, core functionalities. Um, also if you can now execute, uh, if you can now, uh, if you can extract some of the of the interesting uh, research topics right now, as a ResNet explainable AI knowledge graph, they are all coming actually from Asia and from China. Uh, also, really important conference for the for the AI artificial intelligence. Uh, actually, both both winners actually in the last two years came from from university or Tsinghua where uh, Chinese researchers are delivering a really, a really tremendous change. And if we're talking about the patents in, the, in this industry in period of 2014 to, to, uh, to uh, 2017, uh, we have uh, our growth uh, actually in different kinds of uh, industry domains where uh, artificial intelligence in research papers are mostly actually uh, connected with the smart cities, transportation, agriculture, government, by government, there is also military research uh, below that, banking and finance, as interesting industries that are actually having some benefits uh, in the field of, of AI. Um, companies that are in the domain of, of uh, some segments here, deep learning, for example, as, as a core segment, we have a company like Baidu that is uh, actually deploying different kinds of research papers uh, in, in uh, with goal of, of uh, actually creating a new architectures uh, for, for deep learning. Transportation, pretty active companies like Toyota, Bosch, um, Lifestyle Healthcare, we have Siemens, Philips, uh, Samsung, etc. Um, and of course that machine learning as a core, core element of all this stuff is something that uh, is uh, uh, in every year actually expanding and you have a year on a year growth rate of, of patents also that are uh, using some machine learning in their work and um, right now machine learning is actually growing 28 percent per year in research paper where actually researchers are using using this uh, logic programming in fuzzy logics are, are actually also elements that are pretty pretty uh, interesting here um, if we are talking about AI research uh, patents uh, from the side of the companies, um, actually for me it was surprising to see IBM as, as a leading company uh, here actually dramatically um, on a higher position than Microsoft, for example. But IBM is doing a lot uh, actually in the field of quantum computing, some dialogue system, etc. There is also really great, I know, have you heard for it, there is a really great project uh, um, and discovery from the IBM uh, team in uh, Tel Aviv, where they are doing some debate or debater project, uh, and the conversation between a person and that system is unbelievable. Um, of course, the companies like Microsoft, Toshiba, Samsung are pretty, uh, pretty, pretty. Um, 
active in the, in the system here. Um, I need to mention that Google, for example, is uh, having different kind of a strategy. Their strategy is more focused on acquisition of startups and researchers. Um, if we are talking about uh, if we are talking about the organizations uh, and the way how organization could be classified in, in this world of artificial intelligence, uh, we can see three actually segments: AI assisted ones, or AI enabled or augmented ones, AI driven companies. Um, by AI assisted companies, we mean that those are companies that are using some tool that is helping them in some automation of some process. For example, I know sales or some I know chatbot for I know some customer engagements, etc. But if we are talking about a new approach there or newer approach, here, we see here an AI augmented um, augmented approach where we have companies that are trying to build their own. AI features that are helping them in, in further scale of, of their, their solutions. And for me, mostly uh, interesting, the, the most interesting one is AI-driven approach where you have companies that are totally focused on artificial intelligence. And here we can see companies that are, for example, uh, in automotive sector where they are using a um, bunch of different kinds of algorithms for solving different kinds of computer vision and predicting, predictive problems. Um, and yeah, from, from the side of the, of, the, of the business and from the side of the research, you have different kind of approaches, I would say. But today we need to see how to, to, to set up some, some stuff in a new way. And um, I'm originally coming from the industry where the speed of execution is something that is really important in the process. And you don't have time to spend, I know, a couple of months, a year on some pilot programming or, or something like that. And if we are talking about the uh, steps, how we should address and start with some segments if we want to solve some specific problem and maybe I know start with some startup or some company uh, there um, of course that most valuable part of it is, is, is data and how to source and, and collect the data and, and prepare that data is something that is really really important um, today you can find a lot of data for the training purposes but for a real uh, product, it's really diff uh, difficult to, 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 uh, to find something and you, to, uh, and you need to invest a lot to be able to, to extract some, some stuff. Of course, you need to have a really uh, knowledgeable technical team who is able to understand all elements uh, of, of, of your uh, things, what you are trying to achieve there, etc. Today, oh, yes, you can find uh, services like commodity AI services where uh, Microsoft and some other companies are delivering you as a commodity and you will deploy some models you will get some you know, predictions about some stuff with some accuracy, etc. But the next, next step is tuning of, of some, uh, some aspects, and you really need to have people who understand the process and how to tune some stuff. Um, yes, you will train your, 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 your uh, model, you will de deploy it, uh, you will get some initial predictions, etc. But also one of the, of, the, of the really important aspects is to have domain knowledge people who are able to understand essence actually of the, of the problem that you are trying to solve. I had the also experience where companies are implementing some, some uh, algorithms for, for, uh, for example, deep learning for, for predicting some um, price changes like trends in some segments, but they didn't have knowledgeable people who are able to extract and to create a, a value for, from it in the, right, in the right manner. By that also we mean visualization of those, those uh, data in a, in a new way. Uh, also, something that is really helpful, like hands-on uh, thing, is actually this canvas. Uh, canvas that really helps you if you are also in the research, but if you are in in business domain, uh, canvas that helps you to understand actually what you are trying to achieve there. And with this canvas, you are able to also to specify okay what are the decisions, what are the key elements, data sources uh, that you are using here. And uh, one of the most important uh, aspects, from my point of view, is also this value proposition part, where you really need to precise. Uh, what you are trying to, 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 to solve there and to be really sharp. But if you, are, if you um, actually uh, create this kind of a, a canvas in your company, uh, it will be a really, really a great thing for, for your team to understand what you are achieving and it will be uh, really uh, uh, easy for them to start with some, some initial, initial stuff. 
Um, and yes, there is a lot of problem with, with uh, segments of uh, communication, of course, in the technology world, where communication between your, for example, AI team, data science team, and your software development team needs to be um, uh, maybe on, uh, on more agile, uh, on more agile uh, level. Um, by that, we, we mean that you need to be fast in execution to have more faster MVP development um, because it's really, really important to see, okay, is this working? Is my approach and my assumption good for me or not? Um, how to manage your AI team? The free, free aspect that are really important is to specify your acceptance criteria and to say, okay, we are deploying this model. We are, we are expecting to have 95% accuracy of the model uh, with performance of, I don't know, a couple of seconds or milliseconds. We're then, it's a totally different thing than to ha actually have a more open approach uh, to, to, to your people. Um, if you also write a good specification about uh, stuff what you are trying to, to achieve there together with this canvas that we uh, mentioned earlier is something that is uh, beneficial for, for your company and, and for your research because based on, them, uh, or the, or based on that you will be able to measure performances and just to pivot uh, your, your approach and, and your strategy. Um, also, communication between software development team uh, and AI team, as I said, need to be more agile, need to be more faster, uh, etc. Um, and if we are today on this, uh, as we call it, AI journey, we are uh, actually on the road between some reactive position to transform, uh, trans more transformative uh, position, uh, where if you are talking about reactive, uh, today we are talking about more traditional oriented companies that are now maybe uh, structure, structuring their, their data, they are starting with some stuff. But at the end of this chain, actually, you have transformative companies that are really fast in execution, really agile and, and able to, to be flexible in, in actually applying different kinds of new things because new things are happening, happening each day uh, pretty fast. Um, yes, as I said, there are a lot of hype. Uh, there are a lot of hype uh, in, in the AI world, a uh, lot of challenges actually that needs to be solved today, uh, but also it's not so, so pink, I would say, like that. Uh, there are a lot of challenges and problems, and of course companies and institutions are not actually sharing their, their uh, wrong stories or their failures, etc. and you have a bunch of them. Uh, this is a really good, good presentation of some, some, some stuff. Uh, here and we also need to talk about those segments. How we uh, should actually, how how we should actually um, organize our failures and and uh, also present that to to others in some way where we are all be able to to learn about it. Uh, there are different kinds of open AI initiatives or open data initiatives, and I really uh, I'm lover of those kinds of things because it's essential because AI is something that is really big, bigger than than all things actually that we had uh, so far. Um, we are doing a lot of things actually here in, in the region uh, as a community. Also, we are organizing some uh, big summit in Amsterdam where each year we are actually gathering more than 6,000 people um, and researchers like Joshua Bangio, um, Simmons, um, Lacoon and others. And also in the region we are doing a lot of also things where we are uh, seeing this actually uh, region as, as a good hub for artificial intelligence. And one of the things is also uh, event that we are organizing this year uh, where we want to, to, to create a new land, new land of possibilities. Uh, we call it Wonderland AI, where our, our goal is to, to create uh, and to bring experts from, we have a small video here, to have experts from, uh, to, to attract the experts from, from Europe, from states, to come here and to discuss about topics uh, of AI, also from a technical point of view, but other segments about like uh, ethics, uh, moral, and some other stuff that are so, so, so important. Um, are we able to? No, we are not. Uh, just a second. We have a really cool video. I hope that you like it. 
bunch of animation is not too great. This, this year in Belgrade we are organizing a big summit. I invite you all to, to participate and to, to join us. Uh, we are bringing real experts in, in domain of AI. Um, there's a lot of, lot of buzz, a lot of hype about this stuff and we really need to, to, to discuss about segments uh, and challenges uh, in AI era and um, to, to be innovate, innovative in, in uh, this era it's pretty difficult but it's possible and I always say okay be disruptive, think disruptive and you will uh, eventually uh, create something that is really beneficial to, to others. Um, thank you once again for, for your time. Yep. <laughs>